Hello, and welcome to the Sovereign Electrician Channel. Today, we're gonna to discuss a pie chart. Well, not a complete pie chart, um, but these are gonna be the basis of what everybody needs to know whenever they're gonna do anything with electrical. Um, the breaker size, wire size, how many uh, devices maybe to put on a circuit, how many lights, um, down to horsepower, stuff like that. I'm gonna give you some easy calculations, and this is like almost a secret what the electricians don't want you to know, you know, what happened. P is power, okay? I is current, that is uh, amperage, like your, your breaker size. E is voltage, P-I-E. So P divided by I equals E, P divided by E equals I, I times E, equals P. You're like, what does that mean? Well, let me explain it to you a little easier. Okay, a little easier way to understand this. So we're just gonna convert it, okay? Power, we're gonna say it's wattage. I, if I mess around with that letter, let's just go ahead and call it amperage or current, okay? E is your voltage. Let's just do it over here. So pi is easy to remember, but this is what we're dealing with. Okay, so our wattage divided by this, We'll give you that. Wattage divided by this will give you that. And you multiply it across and you divide up and down. If I wanted my amperage, I would divide the wattage by the voltage, okay? If I wanted my voltage, wattage by amperage. Or if I wanted my what my wattage is, like an overall wattage, amperage type voltage. Now let me give you a quick example of what I mean by this, it's really easy, stand by. So we have our wattage, let's just say 460 watts. Maybe a space heater, it's redundant right now. So that's our wattage, okay? And it's a it's 120 volt, it's not a little 220 outlet, so we're going to divide, right? So we're gonna divide 460 by 120 in order to get our amperage. Stand by, 460. Divided by 120 equals 3.83 amps. Oh, 3.8, okay. Look at how you just found amperage so easy like that. Um, okay, let's see if we had something. Let's see, for instance, 3.8 amps times 120, what would that give us? 460. You see what I'm saying? And so if I were to take my um, wattage and uh, divide it by 3.8, I would end up with 120. I mean, isn't that easy enough? I mean, which way to understand this? Okay, let's try a couple more examples. Just to make sure that you're clear. Okay, let's say you have something 240 volt. Works the same way, the voltage doesn't change. Unless you're dealing with three phase and there's another calculation that you have to do, uh, and motors, there's other things that you have to do, um, continuous load, stuff like that. We're not gonna get into that. These are the basic things that you need to know in order to calculate just about anything in your house. We got 240 volts, okay? We know this is a 220 plug, or 240 volts, what we use in the industry, and a 5,000 watt welder. 240 volt divided by 5,000, or 5,000, I'm sorry, divided by 240, is 20.8 amps, 20.8. So we'll call that 21. So that's gonna be a 30 amp breaker because we're over. Now, in any calculation, you want to only be at 80% of this entire load. You don't wanna be running, the, if it's just 20 amps, you don't wanna be running the razor's edge all the time. Uh, there's spikes in current, uh, there's inefficiencies and stuff like that, it would trip every time. That's why everything is calculated at about 80% of that. So the next breaker size up would be 30 amp. Now, I'm gonna go over breaker sizes and wire sizes so you know what, when you come up with a amperage value, you're gonna have the wire value too, stay tuned for that. Now we're also gonna touch on horsepower. And uh, so I, I think that this is pretty clear that the way that this works, that's really easy. So now let's touch on horsepower, how to figure out how many horsepower and how many uh, amps you're gonna need and then what, you know, what voltage it is. So let's go ahead and touch on that right now. 
Okay, now we're trying to figure out what breaker. We know we've got a 220 or 240 outlet. We've got a motor, but we don't know what the wattage is yet. We don't have, we need one of these values to be able to fill in the blanks to do whatever we want to do, right? 742 watts equals one horsepower. So uh, let's say that it is, let's say, still, um, bear with me here, 742 times 10, 7420. So then we got 7420, 7420 divided by 240 equals 30.9 amps. 30.9. We're over the 30 mark, so we're gonna bump this up to a 40 amp breaker, so we're good anyways with that 80% mark that we had talked about. So this is how you can determine how many, uh, how many watts you have per horse. Well, that's how we can determine the water so we can fill in that value for that. Now, with horsepower, different motors, again, there's a uh, different efficiency rating, full load current, a startup current, so it goes up and it goes above this. Um, it's, it, it changes, then there's a continuous load. Same thing with like heaters, uh, wall heaters, plug-in heaters. If it goes uh, over a certain amount of time, I don't wanna get into all the code logistics with you, but a certain amount of time is called a continuous load. Don't worry about that. Okay, so let's say that we have 50 light fixtures and the bulbs are 60 watts a piece. All right, so let's add that up. Okay, we have 50 fixtures times 60 watts a piece equals 3,000. 3,000 watts total. Okay, now we're gonna see if we can fit all that on one circuit. Got 120 volts, okay? We're dividing, so 3,000 divided by 120 equals 25 amps. No, we're not gonna stick this on a 30 amp breaker. 30 amp breaker is a two pole breaker. They do make them in single pole. Let's not even play around with that. So we would just go ahead and split that in half. We had, uh, how many did we have? 50 on, on a circuit? Conceivably, you can get away with 25 of them, split in half. You can, you can have two circuits for 3,000 watts, so you understand what I'm saying with that. Okay, now let's go over uh, the wire sizes real quick and close this out so you know what size wire, what size breaker, when you come up with something like a 25 amp and what comes next. So I'm only gonna give you a few. I'm not gonna get into other things because they change with wire sizes and breaker sizes and what you have on that load. But let's go over what the values are, what amperages can go, what breakers, and what wire size. Pardon the chicken scratch. But anyways, you can see what I'm getting at and I'm gonna explain it to you. So uh, we have your amperage here and then we have your wire sizes here. So quick and dirty, 15 amps, we arrive at 15 amps with all of our calculations. It's number 14 wire, simple stuff. Go to Home Depot, get the white stuff, 15 amp wire. 20 amp, we arrive there, it's a number 12, okay? 30 amp is a number 10, simple enough. These numbers get higher, these get lower, okay? A 40 amp, number eight, simple enough, okay? 50 to 60 is a number six, and it's covered under that. But let me state that these are all copper wires. Number six is when you can start getting into aluminum wires and you need to be one size bigger of aluminum than you do copper because copper is a better conductor than aluminum is. So then that, there, in the code book, that's where things start changing. So there's different things like how hot it is, uh, if it's in pipe, how many conductors are in the pipe, that's called D-rating, stuff like that. For all intents and purposes, you don't need to know that. So any, so that's the basics of anything you wanna find out. It's, it, it's all right there for you. So it's, it's very easy. So anything that you wanna figure out, now you have the basics, what every electrician needs to know. 
even the homeowner, everybody, this is the most important number one thing before you do anything so you know how to keep yourself safe and your property safe and everything else and you don't have breakers tripping and the lights going on and stuff like that. So with this, you can do anything. I have faith in you. Thanks for watching.